Okay, we're on a new basement here, and uh, I wanted to go over some design elements here. We've got a couple design elements on this job that we're going to have to work around. And I'm going to go through these one at a time. Chances are you're going to have one or more of the same elements in your basement. And I'm going to talk about how my company goes around these design problem areas and makes it all work out beautifully in the end. All right, first thing that we're going to talk about here is we have uh, the water meter coming into the home. Okay, this is uh, public water. You can see that the water comes right through the wall there from the street and comes straight into a pressure valve and then we got the meter head and we also have a shutoff here, all of which we have to be able to get to later on once the job's completed if we ever need to service anything. So this sticks off the wall, this whole set here sticking off the wall about, if you look down here, about a foot to the furthest point which is right here off the wall one foot so we're going to build if you look down on the floor here you can see I've, I've laid out a chalk line one foot off the exterior wall right here I've come off the wall one foot so that I can get all of these pipes and meters and everything inside a corner that I'm going to build here and then what I'm going to do I'm going to build a wall on that red line about a foot off the wall and I'm going to put a 30 inch door you can see I've got it laid out right there I wrote on the floor there 30 inch door I'm going to be putting a 30 inch door in this little wall which is only going to come over to this corner right here okay and that corner is if we pan up here is the very end of this water meter setup so I'm going to put that whole little setup there in a corner closet with a 30 inch door so when we're finished and we're looking at this wall here, we are going to see a finished six panel colonial door that will match all the other doors in the house. Okay, And that's how we're going to swallow up design problem number one, which is uh, a very typical one. In just about every job I'm working around a water meter somewhere in the basement. So that's design element number one and we're going to put it in a closet with a 30 inch door. Inside that closet will be unfinished. It'll look just like it does now when you open that door. Alright, design element number one. Okay, let's take a look at that water meter closet that we built to hide that water meter. You can see it's just a bump out from the main wall that runs the length of the basement. And we framed it out here, you know, about out of the corner here to, to the outside, about 18 inches. And we've got a matching door. You can see we've got a six panel colonial door there. It looks just like all the other doors uh, that we put in the basement. All right, we didn't build some kind of access panel or something. We made a full closet door. And inside here, we hid the water meter. Now, we did put two shelves in this closet. This is an unfinished closet. And underneath this shelf right here is our water meter. All right, we can get to the shutoff and we can access the uh, meter if we have to, and also uh, another shutoff that's in line with the meter. All right, so we picked up a little extra unfinished storage space in there and we hid the water meter. So that's how we took care of our water meter that was protruding off the wall. Uh, in this case, um, roughly about 12 inches and we had about a four foot section of pipe that also came off the wall a foot that we had to hide. So we put it in a water meter closet. Okay, design element number two, and this is a real typical one as well. We're going to be working around the electrical panel box, the load center. And as you can see, that load center is just fastened to a piece of plywood and it's hanging right on the wall. All right, it's in a finished section of our basement, so we're going to have to work around that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did with the water meter. You can look down here on the floor. You can see I've already written on the concrete floor there, 30 inch door. All right, I'm going to pan up here. All right, that 30 inch door will be centered right on that panel box. All right, we're going to build the wall just far enough away that that panel box is actually inside our wall. All right, if we look at the side of the panel box here, we can see we've got We've got a piece of plywood here, which is three quarters inch, and that's what it's fastened to. And then we have the box itself, the load center box. 
which is an additional four inches. So we've got about five and a half inches here from the from the wall to the face of the panel box. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out six inches. Let me look down here on the floor. You can see we've snapped a, a chalk line from that corner of the basement right along all the way over to the uh, to the furnace over there six inches off the floor and we're going to build a wall right in front of our panel box and then inside that wall we're going to position a 30 inch door right centered on the load center so when that wall is finished we'll open up a 30 inch door which will look like any other door in the house and inside that door will be our panel box and it'll look exactly like that inside unfinished but from the finished side view it'll look like a nice finished closet door in a finished room so that's design element number two the panel box the load center okay now we're going to address what we did with the uh, electric panel and again you can see we have a six panel colonial door here that we put right in front of the panel open up the door and as you can see we we're still looking at the uh, unfinished block wall the plywood and the electrical panel that's fastened to the plywood and that just fits inside the plane of the door here the uh, the cover here is almost flush with the uh, with the drywall actually so it's just in there just enough room to shut the panel door and hide it away inside a closet so we have great access to that electrical panel at a later date. Now that is a 30 inch door. And again, we did the same thing we did with the water meter. We put it inside a, um, an unfinished closet behind a full matching six panel colonial door. Now I like this a lot better than um, building a little, a lot of folks will try to build little doors around right around the panel box maybe with a little little knob and some hinges and they'll build a little what I call a little access door to go around the uh, around the panel box itself but I like to just do a full door you got great access to work on it um, when you need to get in there and work on the panel box and it looks so much nicer and so much more professional just to have a full door there than to build some kind of little well, I call them booby hatches, a little booby hatch. I think the full door looks so much more professional. So that's how we went around the electrical panel box. Okay, now let's talk about design element number three. And this is a real common design element uh, that most homeowners are faced with when they're looking to do their own basement. And that is how do you hide the, the furnace? The uh, central air conditioning and heating unit that's in the basement, the air handler. How do you uh, how do you go around that? Well, that really depends on where in the basement it's positioned. Um, now, this job here, it's positioned in one of the quarters of the basement, up against the wall. As you can see, it's only about a foot off of the wall here. All right, and it's back in one of the corners of the basement with no windows. Also, back there with the air conditioning and heating we have a water softener which you can see right there we've got a water softener unit right beside the furnace and we also have a uh, what's called a flash water heater up there that heats the water a gas fired flash water heater alright that's back there as well as I'll take a walk over here as well as you can see down the floor there we have a sump pump pit in the corner along with all that other stuff. So what we've decided to do is we've decided to section off this quadrant of the basement, which is about a 13 by, and we're gonna go right over to that support column there. It's about a 13 by nine area, and we are going to just close that off and put all that stuff in what we call an unfinished storage area. All right, and all that will just be neatly hidden away inside of the storage area, all right? Now, if the air conditioning unit would have been out in the middle of the basement, which I know a lot of folks have AC units out in the middle of the floor somewhere, maybe near the stairs somewhere or somewhere centrally located, in that case, I'd be building a closet around it and putting a four or a five foot door 
uh, on the serviceable side of the unit so that I could service the unit. All right, but that's not the case in this basement. This this basement is laid out where it's at one end of the house, which is the best scenario, and it's also grouped in with some other mechanicals like the water softener and the, the water heater and the sump pump. So we kind of lucked out on this one. And we're just going to put it all away in the 13 by 9 storage area. So that's how we're going to handle all of those design factors. All right, and really that's design element number three, and it uh, includes a whole bunch of mechanical stuff. We're just going to put it in an unfinished storage area. Okay, now our furnace and our water heater and all the other uh, uh, water softening pieces of equipment and whatnot that we had, we put in an unfinished storage area. All right, so it's right behind this wall with the two doors. Now this door to the right here, I'll show you quick, um, is actually a powder room that we put in. All right, we put in a little pedestal sink and a and I come out on the other side. So we built a little half bath here for the homeowners on this side. And on the other side of this wall is our unfinished storage area. Let's take a, take a look at that. And we'll go through this door here. Get some lights on here. Okay, so back here, there is our, uh, our furnace, air conditioning unit. And you can see we've got, uh, it's bordering another wall that goes over to the exercise area. But back here we've hidden the furnace and we've hidden the water softening equipment as well as the flash water heater. All right, that's all back in here. We also took advantage of uh, the space back here by putting some heavy duty uh, two foot deep plywood and two by four shelving units in here from the homeowner. Any place that we could we could put some shelving, we put we put a section of these shelves. Well, we've got one here that's about six foot long. We got a four footer over here. And if we pan back there where we came in the door, there's another four foot section as well for the homeowner to store their extra supplies on. But um, you know anytime you have a grouping of mechanicals like a furnace a hot water heater um, try, I try to keep them together and I try to design the basement so that that section of the basement is uh, quartered off and kept unfinished and uh, basically utility and um, in this case that's what we did we created a about a 13 by 10 foot storage room and we just got everything concentrated back here neatly tucked away so we killed a couple birds with one stone there by taking care of the furnace the uh, water softener equipment and the flash water heater plus the homeowner picked up some nice uh, heavy-duty plywood shelving so that's how we took care of the mechanicals on this job okay now we're going to talk about design element number four and if you have a um, sewage line that is going out through your wall above the floor okay this one's about 36 inches up off the floor you're going to have to be able to access that sewage lateral all right because on the end of that is what's called a clean out cap all right that's that big cap that goes into that four inch pipe there now if you take that cap off there that pipe goes straight through the wall and straight out in this case to the public sewage system okay that's public sewer here as well as public water but that pipe goes out to the public sewage uh, and we have to be able to access that later on so that becomes another design element here now if you take a look at this pipe from the side view you can see that the pipe sticks off the wall from the wall to the edge of the cap here it's about 14 inches so what we're going to do is we're just going to build a pillar around that and if I pan down on the floor here you can see I've drawn it on the floor in pencil I'm pan in on that there you see those two X's there that black line right there is 14 inches off the wall all right it's this one right here now that line right there if I pan up represents the edge of the cap all right right back down to the floor here and there's our line again that's the same distance from the wall all right out to that line 
as we are up here from the wall to the cap. So I'm going to build a pillar about one foot wide. You can see that's a one foot wide line there. And that's going to go from the floor, the pillar, the framing is going to go from the floor all the way up, all the way up to the ceiling. All right, and I'm going to show you what that looks like later in the job when we frame it out and uh, to see how neat it is and, and how we can hide that pipe. And then what we're going to do after the job is drywalled is we're going to put an access panel right here, a plumber's access panel door here that, that will open up and permit a plumber to get a snake in here if this line ever has to be snaked out because it gets clogged. All right. So that's how we're going to handle the sewage clean-out cap. We're going to put it in a pillar, which is going to go from the floor all the way up to the ceiling. And it'll just look like a pillar that goes up the wall. And in that pillar, we'll have an access panel that will permit us to uh, service that clean-out and uh, unclog that pipe if it ever needs to be done. So that's design element number four, the clean-out cap for the sewage lateral. Okay, uh, now for our sewage clean out that was over here in the corner, what we did was we framed out a little corner here about four inches deep, basically built a column in the corner here, and inside this plumber's access panel, and uh, I'm going to take this off here. This one here, what you do is it's got a spring loaded um, piece of plastic in the back of it. You push it down and pull it out. All right, the whole access panel comes off, and inside there, is our uh, clean out cap and we need to be able to get to that because that's the main clean out that goes to the uh, to the street for the home sewage so we had to have access to that so we put it inside one of these uh, plumber access panels and you can see on the back here that it's got a spring loaded um, piece of plastic that keeps it firmly into the drywall all right so what you do is you just take the uh, the access panel stick it in the hole spring it down and back up like that. Now that's a Home Depot item and we use those quite often. We use them for uh, not only sewage cleanouts, we also use them for hot and cold water shutoffs and gas shutoffs and occasionally for uh, like an ice maker shutoff. Um, we'll also use those for uh, the air damper controls on some of the air conditioning feeds that go to the first floor when they're in the ceiling. So. That's how we got around that obstacle, how to access the, uh, the sewage cleanout cap after drywall was finished. Okay, design element number five is your typical support column. This is a metal three and a half inch support column that goes up and is holding up the beam, the central beam in the house that spans the whole basement and goes from exterior sidewall all the way down to the other end of the basement and to the other exterior wall. That's the main support beam and this is one of the support columns and it's right out in the middle of our open floor area here as you can see. We've got one there near the stairs which I'll, I'll talk about in just a minute but we're going to talk about this one that's kind of right out in the middle of things here and what we're going to do we like to build what's called half walls and we're going to come over here in front of this pile of wood here and I'm going to show you. We're going to be building a half wall that's going to go from the base of this column right across and it's going to tie right into the exterior wall over there. It's just a little six foot half wall which is going to come across here and it's going to get tied right into the side of this column right here. All right? And the half wall is going to be about 36 inches tall. And by building these half walls it kind of takes away from the fact that Hey, there's a column in the middle of the room that we got to do something with. It's kind of uh, dividing the basement in half, if you will, one side to the other. This, this basement side wall here is about 26 feet long. From this side all the way down there to the water meter corner, it's about 26 feet. The pole's right about 13 feet, so it's kind of like separating the basement right in half. From this quadrant over here with the water meter, all right? from this half of the basement over here with the sewage clean out. All right? There's two separate areas, 13 foot over here on that side of the column and 13 foot over here on this side of the column. So instead of just wrapping the column and just having a post there in the center, what we like to do is we like to put a half wall and connect the half wall from the post and take it right over to the side wall. And it kind of gives you, you know, uh, a, nice, a nice divider between area A and area B 
without just having a column that you run around. They can also be used as furniture backers. You can put a couch up against them. Uh, you can also put outlets in them. They serve a whole lot of purposes. Uh, but the main thing is it takes away from the fact that there's just a pole there and we have to do something with it. I don't like a pole just boxed out in the middle of my basement because I don't want it to look like a basement. I want it to look like another level of the house and just wrapping a column with drywall with four corners definitely looks basement -y. So we do the half wall trick and I'm going to show you what that looks like later on uh, in this project. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you what all of these design elements look like once they're framed and then once they're finished. Okay, that support column as you can see is gone um, and we've incorporated that into our half wall. Um, I love to do this. I do this on a lot of jobs. I'm a big fan of half walls uh, leading up to a support column because they break areas into separate areas without, uh, without making the room feel closed off. I mean, it's still open. I can still see the home theater wall from here, from the play area, but uh, it, uh, it still feels open down here because the half wall creates uh, a nice divider and also leads to the support column, making the support column seem like it's not really there like we're not running around the support column. The, uh, the half wall tied into a support column gives you a nice room divider, a nice backer for couches, and as you can see, we've also put an outlet in here. Uh, they're decorative. We use the, uh, the pine caps on top of our half wall uh, with the colonial trim underneath. You can see the detail there. It's real nice. It adds to the room. And it butts right up to our column, which now really doesn't seem so, you know, obvious you know it's a little less inconspicuous when it's attached to a half wall it seems like it was it was there for the reason to uh, end the half wall rather than um, a pole holding up the house and I think it's a, a great way to hide a column uh, over here if you look on the other side you're gonna see a little bump out there beside that bookcase and right there there's about a one foot bump, bump out that comes out of the corner there there's actually another support column in there and what we did was we just extended the wall out a little bit and create a, created a little corner there and cleverly hid the other column that was there so we had a column there and the other column was right over there at the end of the half wall so that's how we took care of the two support columns that were out in our main living area on this particular job we did the half wall trick and we pulled the other one out into a little corner about 16 inches or so and hit it in the corner and what that did is it formed an archway between the half wall column and that little corner uh, that sends you right over into the home theater area which is right on the other side of the half wall okay i wanted to show you guys a couple things here on this new job that we're doing here out my way um, we had a bunch of columns on this job. We had one here, we had one right there, we had one down there where uh, one of our guys is working down there. There's three there. And we had one right over here uh, that we needed to hide. So what we did is we blended them all into half walls. As you can see, we got a half wall coming in off of our exterior wall to this column right here. All right, and that's going to be a home theater over there. So that's going to make a nice backer for a couch there. We've got another one over here that was about five feet off an exterior wall. It was just in an odd place, so we threw another half wall between the exterior wall and that one on there. As you can see, we, we boxed these columns out with two by six. This is a two by six here, and inside is the column. So we hid the, uh, the columns inside two by sixes, all right? And the drywall will go right around there. We got one more half wall down here. And you can see there's another column right out in the middle of a, of a big room here. We put another half wall there. And what we did is we left a big archway between that column there and this column here. And finished everything all else with uh, half walls. And uh, now it looks like it's there for a reason. Instead of just a bunch of columns that you'd be running in circles around, we turned those columns in the half wall situations it looks much more professional and it also divides the basement into different areas um, this one down here uh, we used a, a half wall between the column and the exterior wall we created like a billiard area over here where the sawhorses are and on the other side of this half wall here 
walk through here. Over here on this side we've got uh, what's going to be a home theater and we're going to be using the half wall right here as a backer for a, a, a pit sectional of furniture and across from this half wall will be the viewing wall and you can see we're, we're starting to put the blue boxes on over there for the speaker wires and the, uh, the stereo rack and all the other equipment that's going to go into the home theater but we we'll walk over here and we'll, we'll look back at that half wall that half wall then becomes a backer for the couch um, and kind of separates the home theater from the billiard area right on the other side of the wall um, but instead of putting a full wall here from the floor all the way up to the beam we kept it open which makes the basement appear larger um, keeps things open keeps communication flowing between the billiard area and the home theater but uh, at the same time the half wall and the column kind of create a perfect divider between area A over here and area B over here so uh, you know if you're looking for ideas on what to do with those rotten columns that just seem to be in the way everywhere on your job you can see how we've cleverly gone around them as a matter of fact the only column out of the four that we still have in the middle is that one right there um, and you know there was just nothing we could do here we were five feet off an exterior wall here it was only five feet of space between the wall and the column and it was in a in a, in a really uh, in an area where you know you can't really do much over here so we just boxed that one out all right the half wall didn't work here but um, you know we managed to hide that column there with a half wall and the one down there in a half wall and that one over there at the home theater in a half wall and it's the best way that I know how to uh, mask columns and make them appear as though they're there for a reason rather than just an eyesore that you got to run circles around so uh, keep that in mind when you're designing your basement layout try to work your columns into half walls and hide them cleverly and that way uh, your basement will flow from one area to the next and those columns won't seem like such eyesores okay let's talk about design element number six uh, if you look up here on the ceiling you're going to see we have some what's called flex ductwork hanging down further than the bottom of the floor joists All right, you see how it's hanging down there about a foot or so not good for a nice flat drywall ceiling so what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to end up putting those duct trunks um, up in what we call a soffit and if you've watched our framing video um, we have a series of framing videos uh, there's four DVDs in the uh, box set I think it's video number three I show you how to in complete detail how to frame soffits to go around ductwork like that up there so we're going to be putting those two low hanging uh, duct trunks inside what's called a soffit and uh, I'm going to show you what that looks like framed up and finished as the job progresses so that's design element number six uh, what to do with any type of duct work, flex duct or hard pipe or uh, regular foam duct board, metal duct, duct work. We always, uh, if it's up on the ceiling, we're putting it inside what's called a soffit. And uh, that's how we're going we're gonna to hide that. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that later on in the video. Design element number six, duct work on the ceiling that uh, keeps you from being able to put your drywall flat on the ceiling. Okay, if you'll recall, we had a bundle of flex ductwork hanging down from the ceiling about, uh, about a foot. And what we did was we cleverly hid that ductwork up inside a soffit ceiling. And you can see this little recessed area here uh, that runs in beside that, that door there. It goes back in there about four feet. And you notice on the back wall that there's two outlets back there. Now the reason for those outlets is we're going to have um, a refrigerator and freezer side by side in this little pocket here. The homeowner wanted to have them uh, built into the wall, uh, recessed in the wall beside their pantry closet, which is right to the right there. So we carved out a little uh, six foot wide area and we made it about six and a half feet tall to accommodate their refrigerator and freezer. And what we did was we lowered the ceiling above the refrigerator and the freezer and up inside that ceiling we've hidden away the uh, the flex duct that was hanging down it's still up there it's still hanging down but we hid it inside a low soffit ceiling which is probably my favorite way to hide 
that low hanging fruit, the, uh, the ugly duck trunks that we just can't relocate, uh, put them in a soffit and uh, try to turn it into something that's creative. So again, sometimes you have to put your designing thinking caps on to hide those things, but more often than not, they're going in a lowered ceiling, um, some type of a soffit to hide them and uh, you know, create something out of a bad situation, basically. Um, we just took a bad situation and designed it into something that was functional and killed two birds with one stone. Okay, this is design element number seven. And you're looking at about a 40 foot section of ductwork that goes from the furnace all the way up into the basement there. And it starts at the furnace and it travels down the length of the house from one end to the other. All right? That's a lower section of ceiling. You can see it's about 10 inches lower than the floor joists. So what do you do? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to be putting that in a soffit. All right? Anytime that we have duct trunks, and most basements are going to have a duct trunk, your house probably has a duct trunk. If you have central air conditioning and heating, uh, chances are you've got this from one end of your house to the other as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to build a soffit which is going to completely hide that duct trunk. All right? One straight line. We're going to go from one end of the house to the other with a soffit and we're going to have a lower section of ceiling, the complete length of the soffit. All right? It'll be a little bit lower. It'll be about 10 inches lower than what's going to be going up on the floor joists. Okay? So we're going to have a high ceiling out here where there's no duct trunks and we're going to have a lower ceiling, 10 inches lower, the length of the duct trunk that's going to go right underneath all that foam duckboard there. All right, and that's how we're going to hide the ductwork as well as the beam. Okay, the beam is hanging down just about the same as the side of the soffit here. We got the soffit and the beam real close, so we're going to incorporate hiding the beam inside the soffit, the same soffit as we are going to be hiding the ductwork in. And I'm going to show you that later on in the video as well when it's framed up. All right, so that's design element number seven. Uh, the main duct trunk that in most homes is going to run the length of the basement. All right, we hide them away in soffits. Okay, if you look over my head there, you'll see that duct trunk that ran from one end of the basement to the other. And I'm starting back here in the storage room so I can show you how this worked out here. You can see it's hanging down right over top of that door that enters back into the finished area. Now once we pass out into the finished area, we turn into a drywall ceiling above our head here, hiding that same duct trunk, okay? This duct trunk right here goes right over top of this wall here and continues the whole way down over top of that bookcase down the other end of the room. And we put it in a soffit. Let's take a look out here and show you what we did. You can see we've got a higher ceiling up here with all of our recessed lights. And then we've got this lower section of ceiling that comes uh, off of that upper upper tier. Let's see if I can get this camera to focus here today. It wants to pick up both ceiling lines at once. Okay, so you can see we have the upper, upper ceiling and then we drop down about one foot and then we have a lower soffit that runs the full length of the room right back over top of that bookcase. Inside that lower soffit, inside that lower ceiling is that duct trunk. Alright? We actually 45'd it back right there and, and tightened it up a little bit over top of the bookcase so that we could get this shadow box on the wall up here. Um, so that's, that's what we did with that particular duct trunk. We put it in one of our soffits. And, um, you know, if they're done right, they make a clean line from one end of the room to the other. And uh, what you end up with is a higher ceiling. And then you've got the lower ceiling with, that's covering the duct trunk. And if you pass underneath that, right back out the other side, it goes back up again. All right, so we'll take a look at that soffit from this side as well. You can see it right there. It starts right over top of the bookcase and it travels the whole way down the room right to the other side, right over to the storage room. And that was all framed out in 2x4s and uh, 
crossed over and I show you how to build soffits if you're interested in learning how to build these and make them look professional and level and crisp and clean. Uh, if you purchase the basement framing videos uh, that are available at the basement store at basementfinishingvideos.com basementfinishingvideos.com you, uh, you can purchase the four video set uh, it's over six and a half hours of framing videos that will show you how to not only frame your entire basement but how to build these uh, nice soffits that will hide your duct truck so that's how we hid the uh, the return air and the feed air duct trunks that went from one end of the basement to the other. We put them in a soffit. Okay, this is design element number eight. If you look up on the ceiling there, you'll see all the floor joists going down the length of the house. And generally, you just like to screw your drywall for your ceiling because we don't do drop ceilings here at the basement remodeling company. We do all drywall ceilings. Um, and because we have design element number eight all right which is these three half inch pipes water lines running the length of the house we cannot put our drywall to the bottom of the floor joists all right because we got these pipes that are strapped to the bottom of the floor joists and we got three of them here so what we're going to have to do to correct that problem to enable us to hang a drywall ceiling down through there is we're going to have to nail two by fours perpendicular to the floor joists every two foot starting at the wall and going straight across the whole way across the ceiling every two foot and when we nail those on there and they're going to run the length of the house just like the water lines all right they're going to run the length of the house just like the water lines what those two by fours will permit us to do will be to hang our drywall right underneath of the half inch water pipes because the water pipes measure about three quarters of an inch and once you get the straps on there you see that black strap up there that's holding the pipe up that's about an inch down from the floor joist but a two by four is an inch and a half in thickness so by nailing those two by fours on there every two foot the length of the house we will be able to pass underneath those water lines and now we can have a nice flat ceiling and pass beneath the water pipes so that's how we correct uh, water pipes, gas lines, or wires that are nailed or stapled to the bottom of the floor joists, which are keeping us from being able to nail our drywall right to the bottom of the floor joists. That's how we correct that problem. All right, we band, it's called banding, we band the ceiling every two foot with two by fours. And that's how we correct that problem. So that's design element number eight, what to do when you have water pipes, gas lines, or wires that are stapled or nailed to the bottom of the floor joists. You band them. I'm starting back here in the storage room again with these water pipes that were strapped to the ceiling that went the whole way across the basement. If you recall, they were, they were fastened right to the bottom of our floor joists and they were in the road uh, we could not uh, put our drywall right to the bottom of the floor joists because these were in the road and kept our uh, drywall from being able to be screwed right to the bottom of the floor joists. So what we did is we banded the ceiling. Uh, we shot two by fours on there perpendicular. And if you look up here in the storage room, and I'm showing you back here because you can't see them out in the finished area, right there is the end of one of those two by fours that's going the whole length of that room out there where the television. Uh, where the home theater is located. They're going from end to end and they're every two foot. There's one there and if you look up inside there, right up in there hiding in the shadows, it's the next one. It's two foot over from that one right there. So it's two, four, six, and eight. We had them the whole way across that room out there. Now let's take a walk back out in the room where those pipes were strapped to the floor joists and take a look at that ceiling. And you can see we've got a nice flat ceiling with all of our recessed lights. Um, you'd never even know those copper pipes were up there. Um, you'd never know that any of those wires were stapled to the bottom either because we've now got a perfectly smooth flat ceiling because we banded the ceiling with two by fours before we sent our drywallers in here. And um, again, if you want to learn how to do this, this is part of my framing video. I show you how to band your basement. 
uh, ceilings and get everything below all the nasties up there, all the nasties being the gas lines, the water pipes, the wires, whatever's, whatever's strapped to the bottom of the, the floor joist to the first floor that's keeping you from being able to hang your drywall right to the bottom of the floor joist. I show you how to frame that in the framing videos that are located at the basement finishing store, okay? Basementfinishingvideos.com. I show you how to band. I think it's in the fourth video. Towards the end of that fourth video, I go over this in complete detail, but that's how we designed our way around all those pipes and we're able to put a nice flat high drywall ceiling up there with recessed lights. Okay, this is design element number nine. Now, uh, this is a typical problem that a lot of folks have. This is a uh, design element problem that occurs when your stairs come down into the center of the basement and are too close. The bottom step is too close to the exterior wall for proper turning radius, all right? And I, I believe that from the base of the step, right at the base of the step over to the wall, there should be no less, no less than 42 to 48 inches. So if you have less than that, that's a, that's a problem, all right? And once we build our exterior wall here, I'm going to shoot down on my camera. You can see my, my chalk line there is four and a half inches off the wall. The, the, the wall is actually going to sit there on the left side of that line. Okay. And once we build that wall on that line, the distance that we have left from the face of that wall to the bottom of the steps is not even three feet. All right, so what we have to do, and what our company likes to do, is we like to build what's called a landing at the base of the stairs. Uh, and in order to do that, what we do is we basically turn the last step into the landing. Okay, so you can see there we've taken a triangular piece out of the stringer. And the stringer is the side of the staircase there that runs the whole way up the side of the staircase. Right. It's made out of a, uh, a 5 quarter by 10 inch board. And we cut a notch out of there. You can see right here. I took my saw across the step flush with the step right up and made a new end to the stringer board. It matched what was down here before but now it's up one step and over and here it is over here. Okay, I cut those out of there. You see I cut that side out as well and I'm going to turn this step into a landing and what that gives me, it gives me from here all the way back to here that much more turning radius at the bottom of the stairs now because this now is the end of the staircase instead of this. So we actually have the distance from here all the way over to the wall as opposed to here which originally was over to the wall. Okay, so we've picked up this whole distance here which is about another 10 inches. Okay, we've given ourselves 10 inches more space at the bottom and what that gives us now is it gives us over four feet over four feet from here over to the wall, which is what you're looking for. All right, so if you have a set of stairs like this that come down, that's what you're going to want to do. So that's design element number nine. Now what to do if your steps are too close to the wall at the base of the stairs? How do you correct that problem? And now you know, you cut out your stringers and turn your, your last step into the landing. Okay, now there's our landing uh, completed at the base of the stairs and you can see we've got a double handrail system coming down. Uh, both sides of the staircase have a nice new oak handrail system with spindles and they drop right down on top of our landing. Now remember that first step that I said we were going to build out in front of and pick up an additional 8 to 10 inches? Well, if you look close there you can see that our landings actually build around the bottom tread. That was the last tread of the staircase. All right, but we turned it into part of the landing. And what that did was, I'm going to step up here, is that gave us another eight inches from the tip, the end of the tread, back to the first riser. It gave us this extra eight inches uh, in front of our null posts. Okay, which widened the width of the turning radius at the bottom of the stairs. And as you can see now. Instead of having, you know, 30 inches from the tip of this first tread that was existing over here to the, to the wall, we've now picked up 
an additional 10 inches, 10 inches. And we're now back to what originally was the second step acting as the first step. So we picked up almost 10 inches of additional turning space and now we have a little more. It's 44 inches from the base of the null post over to the wall. And when you're fighting for inches at the bottom of the stairs, uh, when, you're, when your steps are coming right down in front of a wall and it just seems too tight to turn, maybe to bring couches down, uh, televisions, so in this case we're going to be bringing uh, refrigerators and freezers down here full size, we needed to create that landing to give us the proper turning radius for this job. Uh, and now what will happen is the carpet will just, then it's not in yet, but the carpet's going to come in, it's going to go right up over top of the landing and down the other side into the exercise area and then right up the stairs to the top to the top of the steps. So um, that's what you do when you have the design problem where your staircase is going to be just too close at the base to the wall as you enter the basement. You build a landing. Okay this is design element number 10. Now this is a real common problem in a lot of basements what to do when you have one of these big strapping three or four inch uh, sewage lateral pipes strapped to the length of your wall? I mean, what do you do? Well, some people think that you can build your wall and just build right up underneath the bottom of these, but that really never works out too well. And uh, what I like to do is I just like to build in front of that pipe. This way I get a nice straight wall that I can anchor to the concrete floor and can anchor to the floor joist the whole length of the wall. Okay, so what I do is I measure off of the wall, okay, off the wall to the end of my straps, and these are these are pipe straps up here. The furthest point of the pipe strap is right here on the end. I measure from the wall to the end of the pipe strap at the widest area, which in this case was all the way down here, because it actually turns from a three inch pipe to a four inch pipe right there. So I measured from the wall to the outside of the four inch pipe strap, which is right there, right, right to the outer point of that strap, back to the wall. And I found out that that was six and a half inches. And then what I did was I added the thickness of a two by four to that three and a half inches, which was six and a half and three and a half, which came out to be 10 inches. So I came off my wall. And let me take a look at this over here. I snapped the line from my wall 10 inches from the wall out to my line. Okay, it's 10 inches from there to the wall. I made a 10 inch line and I will set my wall on this side of the line. And my wall will be able to go straight up now, straight up and pass right in front of the pipe. So the pipe is going to be totally behind my wall. All right, from that end of the basement all the way up to the other end of the basement. I've got this 10 inch line. You can see it down here on the floor. This 10 inch line goes the whole way up to that end of the basement, to the storage room that we're going to be building up there. And all the way back down to that corner over there. Okay, One straight, perfectly straight, nice wall anchored to the concrete floor and anchored all the way up into our floor joists. Okay? nice and straight. So I don't try to get fancy and build something underneath the wall and put nails into my block or my concrete wall and any of that craziness. I just build a straight wall and I build it in front of the pipe. Now some people say, well, aren't I going to lose like six and a half inches of wall space, room width? And the answer to that is, yeah, you are. But it's still better than trying to build up under a pipe and having some goofy looking wall that's crooked and uh, underneath of a pipe the whole way down. It's just, it, it doesn't turn out professional and I just never do it. All right, Or I should say I rarely, rarely ever, ever do it um, unless I, I'm fighting for inches for some reason. Uh, but that's how I would go around uh, that design element which is the pipe strapped to the wall problem which a lot of people have. You measure out to the furthest point of the pipe off the wall Add three and a half inches to that for the thickness of your two by four wall, snap that line, and build your wall in front of the pipe. Oh. Okay, remember those uh, big three inch pipes that were strapped to that wall? 
a nice straight flat long wall right there that uh, you never know there was uh, pipes behind. Um, but we took care of the problem. We built that wall that goes from the stereo wall down there down here to the bathroom wall. We built that wall about 10 inches off of the uh, exterior block wall. And I'm going to walk back in the storage room again because it's the only place I could show you what we did because uh, this is all covered and finished out here. So let's walk back here and find those pipes again. And if you look up there, and I'll zoom in on that, there's that big pipe that we had in our way. And if you can look there, that pipe heads right on down and just disappears behind the 2x4 wall right there. And the reason it disappears behind the 2x4 wall is because we built the 2x4 wall in front of the pipe. We didn't build under the pipe, okay? We built, we didn't notch around the pipe. We built the entire wall in front of the pipe. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this or not. Well, there we go. You'll look up there and you'll just see that pipe just disappear into the darkness right there. Um, and you can see that our the back side of our 2x4 wall is roughly six inches at least away from that from that exterior wall, which gives our three and a half inch, four inch pipe plenty of room to slip back into the darkness there. So that's what we did. We just measured out, snapped the line about um, 10 inches off of the wall and then we set the wall back towards the outside wall and what that did was that built our entire pipe in behind the wall alright so I don't try to get fancy and build under these pipes you know when these pipes are in my road I build in front of them and that's what we did here and we'll take another walk out here and check out that wall it's beautiful it's straight it doesn't have any uh, kinks in it um, it's perfectly straight we were able to snap a line on the floor and also snap a line on the bottom of the floor joist to uh, get a perfectly straight wall and um, yeah we lost about six inches of floor space that we would have been able to keep if we would have built under the pipe but our wall is straighter and stronger and uh, much more professionally installed than trying to build something uh, up underneath the pipes. So when you have those pipes strapped to the wall, remember to just build your wall in front of the pipes. Real simple to do. Okay, design element number 11 on this job. You can see we've got this set of stairs that comes right down into the center of the basement. And we've got this triangular shape of space underneath the steps that would really be wasted space if we didn't figure out some way to utilize it. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a wall on both sides of the staircase and underneath the stairs here we are going to put a door from the back side right here we're going to build a wall we're going to drop it down to the floor and we're going to put a 30 inch door it's going to open up to get underneath the stairs now you can drywall these closets under the stairs although I wouldn't recommend drywalling all the way down to nothing you normally would drop a wall down maybe three or four feet from the end so you wouldn't have to try to finish your drywall down to the floor. Normally it doesn't work out too well. Um, or you can just leave them unfinished under there and just have some you know, usable space where you could stick some supplies underneath there uh, rather than lose that space. The other thing that you can do with this, uh, with this set of stairs, with this empty space under there, is you can build bookcases underneath the staircase and on this particular job we are going to be putting a triangular shaped bookcase underneath the stairs alright it's going to be a 12 inch deep bookca bookcase and um, that's going to be uh, sunk right underneath the steps alright so we're going to frame for a uh, birch built-in bookcase alright we're going to frame for a birch built-in bookcase I'm not going to get into that uh, in this video um, because it's it's too uh, involved. I do have a video at the uh, basementfinishingvideos.com that will show you how to build uh, all types of build-ins uh, into your wall, bookcases, stereo racks, um, shadow boxes, whatever type of build-in you're, you're interested in uh, putting in. I do have a video for that. It's just called Build-ins and it's at the basement store at basementfinishingvideos.com. But uh, that's design element number 11 what to do with the space under the stairs when you have a set of stairs that comes down into the center of the basement.
Okay, and we're going to take a look at that space underneath the stairs that we talked about. Uh, as you can see, we built an, an angled bookcase underneath the, uh, the staircase. That's about almost five feet wide by uh, a little over four and a half feet tall. And we built it in there uh, on an angle, the same angle as the staircase. And if you look up those handrails over there and look up over top of the bookcase, you can see that that angle on the bookcase is running exactly the same as the angle of the handrail. Uh, because we built right up underneath the angle of the stairs there. Now that bookcase is a foot deep. Let's take a look at that bookcase. Uh, we're going to look underneath the staircase, that, which is still unfinished. Uh, but I want to show you what we did with the space. It's kind of dark in there. There's our shop back still back there. So we have an unfinished space back there, but actually really nice storage space that we can access from behind the staircase through this six panel colonial door. And if you look there, you can see the back side of our bookcase just sticking in there underneath the stairs. Um, this is a, a birch bookcase that we built, and we slid right underneath the steps. And um, still, they still have, from the back side of the bookcase here, over to the 2 by 4 wall, they still have about 30, about 30 inches of width, which runs the whole way back underneath the stairs. So they'll be able to store boxes or a vacuum cleaner or you know whatever um, back in there. It's good usable space that is easy to access through this six panel colonial door that we put there. All right, so we, we picked up a nice bookcase into that space. Uh, the bookcase uh, protrudes into that space under the stairs. It doesn't take up any room in the living area. And we access that area to, to the uh, staircase through that six panel colonial door which looks like you know any other door that we put on the project and um, that's how we do it we we access from the rear and we build a lot of bookcases into that dead space otherwise wasted space underneath the steps and in this case um, we've got a really really nice look to our stairway wall with a, a beautiful bookcase for knickknacks and uh, you know pictures of the children or videos or whatever you're going to use it for and uh, when you add that to that double handrail it really uh, really creates a, a super nice attractive wall for your finished basement okay design element 13 which is an egress issue all right egress is uh, basically a way out of the basement in case of an emergency such as a fire um, an egress exit can either be a window of the proper size, whatever the, whatever the code says, the BOCA codes, international BOCA codes determine what, uh, what size window you need for your basement. All right. Uh, most townships require building permits and when you pull permits most of the time they're going to make you put in uh, a code approved egress exit if you don't already have one. Now this basement here is a very rare basement. Can, pan the whole way around this basement there are no windows at all in this basement which is very unusual for Pennsylvania but there are no windows so we're going to have to put in a uh, an egress window now an egress window by code um, the minimum distance off the floor the minimum distance off the floor uh, is 40 inches okay all right so uh, you know if you've got any more than that, you got a problem. All right, you can't be any more than uh, 40 inches up off the floor. All right, so if you're at 42, 43 inches up off the floor to the bottom of your window, it will not pass code. All right, so the most you can have up off the floor, the distance from the floor to the bottom of the window is 40 inches. So we're going to come up 40 inches, and we're going to cut into that wall a four foot by four foot wide window right into that masonry wall right there okay here we have a uh, four foot by four foot egress window uh, now this window was not here when we got to the job we actually cut the uh, the exterior wall the basement out which was block uh, masonry unit block and uh, had this installed so uh, we needed to pass local codes and local codes, uh, egress codes here where you had to have um, 
one egress exit out of the basement in this particular township so uh, we had two choices we could have either put some type of egress exterior door entrance um, such as uh, you know, a storm door like you see uh, the two metal doors outside with a set of concrete steps going up that let no light in or we had the other choice of putting this large window in now this window in case of a fire would be uh, would be adequate enough for someone to get up uh, get through there open it up and escape to the outside of the house in case of a fire so uh, that's a four by four double sliding egress window with the well outside that holds back the earth it's like a retaining wall outside there and take a look up outside there you can see there's, there's actually uh, two glass doors on top of that um, terraced retaining wall out there there's two two glass tempered glass windows up there that are actually you know you can walk on those they will not shatter they're shatterproof and uh, they let a tremendous amount of daylight in as well as a great escape hatch in case of a fire so that uh, that passed all local codes here so if you're pulling permits and your township requires a an egress exit this is uh, this is actually my company's favorite option the 4x4 double sliding um, egress window